We are now going to use the tools we built up so far to study a very important control concept called feedback control. And in feedback control, what happens is that we are going to use a feedback signal to, to, to see whether the output looks like what we want it to look like. And so what we have is a system that needs to be controlled, and it's often called plant. And uh, we represent this plant by G and its transfer function by GS. So recall that the transfer function is the Laplace transform of the impulse response. In, in other words, if you give it uh, impulse delta T, uh, then the output of that uh, from the plant is going to be uh, G of T. And the impulse, the Laplace transform of that is going to be, uh, Laplace transform of that is going to be G of S. Okay. Good, so the output of the plant is called YFS, it's represented by YFS, so that's a Laplace transform of the output. And we're going to give it a control input, U, who's, has, which has a Laplace transform, U of S. Now what's actually happening is that though we give it a control input U, it's going to get an additional input, which is a disturbance, which is denoted by W of S. And the disturbance prevents the control uh, input U from going out to the output the way we want it. So it, it's like somebody is jostling your arm as you're trying to do something. So uh, the output Y may not look like what you want it to look like, and we'll come back to that later. But for now, let's focus on the feedback, or the measurement, pro the feedback process. So the feedback means you're going to do some measurement. This is the measurement over here. And the measurement itself may be subject to a certain amount of error. So this measurement error, which causes the measurements to be wrong. And the measurement process has its own transfer function, HS. And almost always, we'll assume that this is going to be a unity. In other words, unity. we are not going to have any errors in the measurement because it gets much more uh, uh, problematic. So we're going to assume it's called what's called the unity feedback. Uh, which means HS is equal to one. So basically no measurement error. And now we've done the control and we've got some measurement feedback over here. So the output of the measurement is going to be B of S, that's the feedback. And this feedback is compared with a reference with what we really want to have. So R of S is what we really want to have happen. And so the difference between the feedback and the uh, reference is is called the error. I think I drew this too fast, so here we go. Let's erase that. Uh, the difference is the error. And what we need to do is to build a controller which is going to uh, look at the error coming in. And so it says, here's the error coming in from here. Uh, sorry which is the difference between the reference and the feedback. And based on this, I'm going to create this control U so that my plant achieves the desired goal Y. So to take another example over here, let's take a simple example where we want, this is time now, and we want some temperature to be maintained in a room. So this is temperature. And the temperature has to be maintained at, let's say, 20, 25 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, this is done through means of some control. And what happens is, let, let's say that the temperature was at 25 degrees at the beginning of the time. And uh, it stays at 25 for a while. And then somebody opens the door, maybe it's the temperature of a room, and somebody opens the door. And the temperature suddenly declines down over here. Now, when it declines, what happens is at this point, at this point in time, but the, the feedback, B of S, is going to say, oh, the temperature isn't 25. It's actually, it's, let's say this is 25, and it's actually only 15. So at this point, the error signal is going to be non-zero because the reference is 25. This value is 25. And so, and this value is going to be 15. So this is an error of 10 degrees. And so the controller looks at the error of 10 degrees and says, what control signal should I give so that I regain the output. So the controller could say, okay, uh, turn on the heater, and it tries to get the heater to turn on, but in fact, the output is going to be uh, 
uh, having some additional disturbance coming in. So, in fact, the door may continue to be open or other doors may be opened. So, the controller will try to respond to this and is going to get the temperature back to 25. Now, ideally, <clears throat> we want the temperature to go up to 25 instantly and then stay like that. But that's never going to happen. What will happen instead is you, you would probably see a rise like this which would be also actually not a bad thing to have. But uh, we can also have worse situations. We can have situations where the temperature, you want to be 25, but you overcompensate, it goes up, and then it, it has this ringing pattern. And so you have oscillation temperature, too hot, too cold, too hot, too cold. Or we could have other trajectories. You could overcompensate and just go off into space. So the temperature keeps rising indefinitely. <clears throat> and that would be actually pretty terrible. In other words, the furnace got turned on and never got turned off again. Or we could have another situation as well, and that would be where, uh, let me erase this uh, this one over here, and I'll erase the other one just so they can see. And the other situation would be it responds, but it takes far too long to respond. It just takes a very long time before it gets responsive. <laughs> so these kinds of problems are the ones we'd like to avoid. And as you can see, these map essentially to the modes of operation of a second order system that we discussed earlier. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to the system over here and see what we can do. And I'm going to um, select this and move this away for now so we can, we can remove that for now. And let's just focus on this system over here. And what we can say is that the output y is going to be given by y equals g applied to u plus w because this is u over here and w being added and then y is the product because remember that in the Laplace domain the convolution corresponds to a product so y equals g u plus w and okay so and the other thing we know that e over here the error e is given by r minus b so the reference value minus the feedback okay now the feedback b is given by h y uh, which because you take h multiplied by the y input y the measurement of y so y is here as well and so you pass through here to b equals h y because we get h uh, h from here and y from here so b equals h y and so E by substituting equals R minus HY. Okay. Now what the controller U is doing is that it's setting it. The controller has the transfer function D over here. So the output U of the controller is going to be DE, which is going to be D times R minus HY. Okay. So uh, we were looking at y being u, so we know what u is. u is going to be dr minus hy. And what about uh, w? Well, we don't know w yet, so let's work through a little bit more. Um, so we know that y is going to be, so let's over here, so if you substitute over here, uh, y is equal to g times u plus w, which is going to be g times, substituting for u, dr minus dhy plus w. And when we, if we move this term over to the left-hand side, we'll get y equals uh, g dr plus g dr plus g w over 1 plus gdh. Or if you can write it another way, this is equal to gd over 1 plus gdh r plus g over 1 plus gdh gdh w. And so if you look at this, what you're saying is that the output y has two 
uh, terms over here. So first we take the reference input R and we multiply that by GD by one plus GDH. And uh, this is sort of the control that we're going to put over here. And then here we have the disturbance coming in and we're going to uh, attenuate that hopefully. We want the disturbance to go away and that's going to be G over one plus GDH. So what the controller is trying to do is to choose this value D so that uh, the control, uh, so that Y maps to the reference value, so that Y equals R basically, and that the disturbance, w, uh, it, this is going to go down to zero. You want the disturbance to multiply by zero. So you want to try and these, uh, match these control objectives. Of course, in doing that, uh, there are many issues that we have to deal with, but at least uh, this equation over here uh, can captures in sort of one single equation uh, the feedback control equation. So I'm going to erase this over here and uh, draw a box around it because this is the basic equation for feedback control. And um, sorry, GDH. And in the typical case where H equals one, we can simplify this further and say Y equals GD by one plus GD R plus G over one plus G D W. And that's the simplified equation uh, of feedback control. So uh, notice that everything here is in the transform domain. I've left out all the, the arguments, which is S everywhere. Uh, and also I made some sub uh, simplifications, which I will uh, now explain. So one of them is I'm assuming single input, uh, single output. And then we're doing a Laplace transform, so the system is continuous. We are assuming that it's a linear time, time invariant. Uh, and uh, with these, uh, with these condi uh, conditions over here, single, uh, so what we'll think of as a S I S O L T I uh, continuous system, with these simplifications, we actually have a fairly straightforward equation for what the output is going to look like, given we have a controller D, we have a plant who behaves like G, uh, and we have a reference input R, and a disturbance that can be modeled by W. And so we're going to look into some characteristics of system, uh, feedback control systems first, and then we look into practical approaches to feedback control after that.